All right, today we're gonna learn a very simple mixed media combination of charcoal and oil paint, and more specifically, oil glazes. And combining these two types of materials, you can really get some really interesting, really dynamic work. So here's one that's in progress, a couple layers on there, gonna keep adding to it. Another example here, just a few layers, gonna keep adding to it. All right, so what you're gonna need is basically charcoal. Now you could use charcoal pencils. You can use compressed charcoal. And you're also going to need oil-based paint. Now in this case, this is an oil-based paint. However, it is water mixable. So I'm not sure how that's possible, but they have invented that. So if you are worried about oil paint, um, you can use this water mixable oil paint made by Artisan. Um, if you're not going to use the water mixable kind and you're going to use traditional oil paint, you're also going to need what's called liquin. And liquin is what will help make the oil paint dry much, much faster. So being water-based, this is going to dry a lot faster. All right. The other things you're going to need are some fixative and you can also use hairspray if you're on a budget. White Rain is like a dollar a bottle I think. You're going to need um, acrylic, polycrylic uh, varnish, ah, polyurethane, that's what it's called. I got this at Home Depot, you can get it at Lowe's and you're going to need some sort of brush to apply it with. And I think that's it for now. Now the first step in creating this process, creating this work of art, is to come up with a non-objective design, meaning it's nothing specific, it's mostly kind of just an intuitive lines and shapes with your charcoal. And what you're looking for is a balance of half white, half dark. Okay, so when you come up with your design, really don't think too hard about it. If you want to just dive in with your compressed charcoal, go ahead. If you're a little hesitant, you can come in with maybe a charcoal pencil and kind of feel it out a little bit. But really, you don't want to think too hard about it. Stick with mostly your geometric shapes or just kind of non-objective lines. I like to just dive in with my compressed charcoal because you're going to get it a lot darker. Feel free to kind of blend it out a little bit to create some different types of values. And if you want to kind of smooth it out and stretch it out. Okay, so I don't want to spend too much time on this video because really this is your intuitive artist self just kind of coming up with some sort of a design. Don't think too hard about it. All right. You might want to do maybe two or three of these and then see which one you like the best. So I've done this one ahead of time, just for time purposes. And of course, yours will look different. If you want to try to use this particular type of design, go right ahead. And then the next step, we have to lock down. We have to lock down this charcoal because when we do the oil glazing on top, we don't want it smearing everywhere. So the first step is we're going to take this outside and we're going to use our fixative spray. And you're going to use a fixative spray by shaking it really good. And then you're going to get about 8 to 10 inches away. And you're just going to put a nice even spray. I'm not doing it right now, obviously, because I'm inside. I've already sprayed this down. All right, keep the can moving. Let that dry and then do it a second time. Do a second coat on there. Okay, so fixative spray. And once that is 100% dry, what we're gonna do next is we're gonna take our acrylic water-based polyurethane. And this really needs to be the water-based polyurethane. Um, and then you're gonna basically just kinda pop this open so you can kinda get an idea of what it looks like. All right, so there's that polyurethane liquid. And what I'm gonna do then 
is I'm going to dip my brush in and I'm going to just coat this with the polyurethane, water-based polyurethane. Now what you don't want to do is be real aggressive with it. You don't want to do a whole lot of back and forth movement because what that's going to do is pull back up your charcoal and it's going to cause it to smear in ways maybe you didn't intend. So what you want to do is just be kind of quick, even, just make sure the whole thing gets nice and coated. Now again, I've already done that for time purposes. I don't know if you can see it, but there's kind of a sheen on there. And what that polyurethane does is it really locks down so that I can build on top of this. All right, now here's where it gets fun. You're going to choose what colors you want to work with. Um, I haven't really worked with the reds. There's a permanent red or rose. I think I'm gonna try some cadmium. Okay, now this is a water-based, I mean, not a water-based, it's water-soluble oil. So if you didn't have a water-based or water-soluble oil, you're going to have to use the liquid. So if you're using traditional oil paints, it's probably going to look better, if we're going to be totally honest, but you can't mix water and oil paint. So use your liquid in the same way that I'm using this water. So whatever sort of brush you want to work with, all right, you're going to kind of create a glaze. So you're going to mix it up enough so that it's thin not too thin, but you want it to be transparent when you apply it. Okay, so I'm going to use a little bit bigger brush to apply it. And then what you're going to do is, you're just going to kind of start applying your oil glaze. Now what you want to be careful of is working on top of your charcoal with something that has yellow in it. Now for whatever reason, yellow does not sit on top of black very well. These other colors will kind of push the black down without lightening it up, but if you're using a color that has a yellow in it, um, you're probably not going to like it. Or if you do use a yellow, what you want to do is kind of paint around the black. But since we're not using yellow, we're just going to kind of go for it here. All right, so here, from here on, basically what we're doing is we're applying glazes. And after I apply my first glaze, I'm going to let this dry. Or if you want to keep working, but the colors are going to keep mixing. Honestly, you're going to like it more if you let it dry. And to be totally honest, this brush probably isn't all that great to use. All right, but you kind of get the idea. I probably won't use this brush anymore. Okay, so once I let that dry, I'm gonna come in with some other colors. Maybe I wanna work in some blues. Maybe I wanna work in some oranges or some greens. Or uh, maybe you wanna work in some whites or some blacks. Once it's totally dry, just keep repeating that process. Just thin down your colors, and then keep working on top. If you want to work in some oranges, work in orange, yellow, blue, green, whatever. Just keep layering, okay? And if you want to be a little more dynamic, you can work in some highlights. This has some of the whites, and you can darken a darker side to create some three-dimensionality. Okay, so your options are really limitless when it comes to this um, layering technique. One other option you have, if you don't like working with oil paint, you can work with oil pastels. All right, oil pastels, these are nothing special. I think I got these at Hobby Lobby. But if you are gonna do oil pastel, you wanna get the best quality that you can. This is by far not the best quality, but it'll kinda show you a little bit. If you would rather work with oil pastels, it's the same principle. Um, let's get maybe some red here. You can come in on top of your oil glazes with oil pastels. All right, layers really easily on top of that water-based polyurethane. 
And I do have another video that is um, how to use properly oil pastels, how to layer, how to work in colors of three. Um, but you can see how easy the oil pastel layers on top. So feel free to do that. And one other option you have, or that there is, you can also do the same thing with pastel chalk. So instead of charcoal, if you want it to be in color, take your pastel chalks, create your non-objective design with the pastel chalks, then come in with your fixative, lock it down, use your water-based polyurethane, put a coat over it, and in this case, you could either do the oil glazes on top, but in this particular case, I was using the oil pastels. I was just playing around. I didn't really know what this was gonna look like. Okay, but it's got a couple layers. I'm gonna keep going, increasing the contrast, push your lights, lights, push your darks, dark, and you'll end up with some really dynamic works of art. Thank you guys for watching. If you liked it, please click the like button, and uh, we'll see you in the other videos. Thanks, bye.